welcome to Zahara. As far as our opening can goes, uh, yeah, we'll keep on this one. I like it. This could be Mana Crypt in the Watery Grave, which will be Chromatic Lantern, then Sky Shroud Claim. Yeah, I like that. We can keep on this one. And we've got Tails End in the hand, too, and uh, a little bit of Late Game Threat and Torment of Hellfire. Yeah, I like this. And some Spot Removal. This is pretty much um, exactly uh, what you want to see in a uh opening hand sorry my uh, product my production assistant dorothy is laying next to my chair and i was going to scoot my chair up and sometimes her uh her little paws get in front of the chair so i had to double check but yes welcome to zahara hope you're excited we've, we've got some good stuff and we're playing against rayav which should be a uh, rayav however you say it um should be pretty fun so let, let's get off to a quick start let's go and shock in uh Let's shock in Watery Grave, let's go Mana Crypt, and let's get Chromatic Lantern on the battlefield, and let's see how this uh, sits with our opponent. Uh, let's go one, not saying our opponent's going to scoop it up, but sometimes Fast Mana does have that effect, so anything else. Um, let's go and pass the turn over to our opponent. We're playing uh, Zahara. Soltai uh, Expel, Soltai Hydras, whatever you want to call it. Death Touch, tap, add two mana of any one color, then whenever you cast a spell with X in its mana cost, um, create a 0, zero green Hydra creature token, then put X plus one counters on it. And we'll cover, uh, cover actually we're just going to call him Ray uh, for this video, that'll be good, because I don't know how to say it, and I always hate uh, pronouncing it wrong for the rest of the game, so we're just going to go Ray right now. So, alright, so we got, uh, let's go and choose Tails of the Mana Crypt Trigger, we won the flip, we are one for one on those, and that will be a land drop for the turn, which is something very nice to see. So, l let's go uh, Harbor, and that's going to be one, two, three for Zahara, and I kind of actually like that. Let's do that, so it's going to be blue, let's tap down green, let's tap down black, and let's tap down two for Mana Kill, let's get uh, Zahara onto the battlefield, that two extra mana is going to make a huge difference in this game, and then uh, anything else, kick it back over to our opponent, play gets Ray, um, whenever a creature, let's get this closed out, there we go, um, whenever a creature you control that's enchanted or equipped attacks, that creature gains double strike until end of turn, so if you're keeping score at home, I'd assume it's going to be some sort of uh, Voltron, Aura style deck, so I'm excited to see what they've got cooking over there. Uh, but yes, we did cover both commanders. Give a quick shout out to our sponsors, TCG Player. If you go to bit.ly slash joltmtg, that's going to apply my affiliate link. Um, that'll allow you to get some cards and help support the channel at the same time. So if you use that, much obliged. And let's go uh, Mana Crypt. And actually, quick shout out to MTGO Traders. Uh, same thing with Ink Gaming and. Last but not least, I started a Patreon, so if you'd like to directly support cool content like this, um, there's a link down in the description below, but if you're keeping score at home, it is officially free time, and we're going to celebrate that by choosing Tails and losing the Mana Crypt, <laughs> Mana Crypt, uh, Mana Crypt Flip. So there we go. Um, so we've got Sky Shroud Claim. It's going to be 1-2... And I think we still end up leaving... I mean, we could go for Return to Nature on Talisman... Um, I, I'm not a huge fan of that line of play because I'd rather pop, you know, a piece of equipment or something like that. So let's go ahead and stick this uh, Sky Shroud claim. That's going to be, uh, let's tap down a green. It's going to be one, two. And we'll tap down uh, one on Chromatic Lantern. Let's go Sky Shroud claim. Let's go ahead and grab a couple more uh, dual sources. Let's grab a Triome. And we need another black source just in case something happens. So we're going to grab Overgrown Tomb. And um, we'll have those come into play. That's going to be one, two, three, four. Yeah, we we'll should go and pay two life on that one. And then uh, anything else? We're going to go and pass the turn. Yeah, we've got a complete open hand. We've got Tails in. We've got Go for the Throat. We've got Return to Nature. And so uh, I think at this point, we'll just simply just pass the turn and kind of see what's cooking over there. Uh, if we want to end up going for a little bit of a quicker Torment of Hellfire to get a Hydra on the battlefield, um, we might end up doing that because they are at 40 life. They'll probably take it. And that'll give us an extra threat on the battlefield, which I kind of do, uh, I kind of do like. So... Um, and we'll see what they try to deploy out this turn. If not, we're going to have Tails in and go for the throat available to us too. And also with uh, Pure Steel Paladin, um, we definitely want to cut that card draw out. So we're probably going to end up going for Go for the Throat on this. So let's go for Go for the Throat. I just want to get rid of that creature on the battlefield. All right, so it's going to be Mask of Memory entering. Um, we're going to cut off that card draw, and that'll kick us uh, back over to our turn. So let's go and choose Tails on this Mana Crypt trigger. Lost the flip. Um, I think we're just going to end up going for the Torment of Hellfire line of play. I like it. Um, let's go and crack uh, Scalding Tarn. That way we can get rid of that land. Let's grab uh, Underground Sea. Uh, let's go for Torment of Hellfire. All right, it's going to be Torment of Hellfire for 8. It's going to be an 8-8 eight, eight Hydra on the battlefield. And we'll see how they want to do this. I mean, it's not going to be the uh, the absolute end of the game. But um, we'll see how they want to, if they want to sacrifice some permanents or uh, Mask of Memory or Talisman. But at least having an 8-8 eight, eight Hydra on the battlefield uh, on turn 4, we'll definitely take that. So we'll see how they decide to play this one out. Okay, and our opponent seems to have gone away from the computer. So I, I don't know... Uh, 
what, what the deal is. But anyway, we got a torment of a hellfire for eight, so I'm gonna go and call it on this video. Um, we've got a torment of hellfire for eight on the stack on turn four with an eight eight hydra to follow up next turn. So, um, hey, we'll take that. You know, it's not gonna close the game out, but that definitely puts the game in our favor, and especially swinging with an eight eight hydra in for next turn. So, but anyway, I'll catch you in the next game. All right, bye. Welcome to Zahara. As far as our opening hand goes, we've got. Yeah, this is a very vanilla hand. We, we've got uh, one, two, three, four, five. That's enough to get to Zahara. Uh, we've got a board wipe to hit the reset button. We've got Eternal Witness. Um, our opponent is um, on the play, so we'll have a card. Yeah, we'll keep on this one. There, there's no reason to ship this one back. Um, if we wanted to be aggressive, you know, let's say we're playing against, like, you know, very powerful commander or something not saying that Lavinia is not powerful but you know one of the more higher tiered commanders maybe we would ship we would ship this one back but when you've got some land drops to make in a ramp deck hey we will make this work. So let's go and lead off with Marsh Flats. Um, let's go and crack Marsh Flats and grab ourselves a dual source that we can have it come into play tapped and not have to, or tri source, have it come into play tapped and not have to uh, forget about it for next turn. So we're playing Zahara. Um, Death Touch. Uh, add tap, add two uh, mana of any one color. Then whenever you cast a spell with X in its mana cost, create a 0 0 green Hydra creature token. Then put X plus one counters on it where X is equal to that X, which is a. Uh, very fun feeling. Um, so we've got Snapcaster, which, yeah, we will definitely take Snapcaster. Um, let's drop in Polluted Delta. And while our opponent, not that our opponent's running Stifle style effects or, you know, search style effects, we just want to get these land searches on the battlefield as quickly as possible. That's kind of the name of the game. All right, so we do have a black source. We have Nurturing Peatland and another black source. Um, let's go and grab ourselves um, Watery Grave. We'll have that come into play tap. Not going to pay two. And uh, yeah, why not? We'll just go and tap down Triumph. So Magic Online lets me pass it through the turn. Um, so we did cover Zahara. Let's go and cover Lavinia really quick. All right, so we're playing against Lavinia. Um, protection from red. Then whenever Lavinia enters the battlefield, detain each non-land permanent your opponent's control with mana four or less. If you don't know what detain is, um, those permanents can't attack or block, and their activated abilities can't be activated. So it's kind of like they went to jail for a turn, if you want to call it that. Pretty cool. All right, so a pretty cool effect, to be honest. Let's go and drop in Windswept Teeth. And let's do this. Let's just pass the turn. We've got Tails in. That's a wonderful card draw for us. That's going to stop Lavinia. Um, if they get some sort of weird, I don't know, activated ability or something like that, we can counter that. Um, but at this point right now, if they end up tapping out for Lavinia, we'll definitely trade that in with the Tails End. Um, crack the Windswept Teeth, and that also gives us access to go Snapcaster Tails End um, to keep Lavinia off the battlefield. Not that it's going to be that big of a deal, but one of the things you got to watch out for with Lavinia is if they have something like, um, oh, what is it? Enters the battlefield, scry one. Yeah, we're cool with that. All right, let's go and crack a windswept teeth. Very interesting. I hadn't seen that card in a minute. Um, let's go and drop in something that's going to... Actually, we'll probably need to grab a green blue source. That'd be pretty good. Let's go and grab breeding pool. I have that come into play tap. Not going to pay two. And uh, we'll let that creature enter the battlefield. Uh, but yeah, being able to have tails in and be able to use it for uh, snapcasters is going to be pretty good. Oh, what I was saying is that if they have some sort of... Conjurer's Closet. That's the card that I'm thinking of. If they have some sort of way to blink um, Lavinia like reliably and consistently, then that will become a major issue for us because we almost we're not going to be able to get the added benefit of using Zahara to tap down to add extra mana. Um, the downside is we won't be able to use that mana, and at the same time, that's going to really stop us from getting stuff moving to where it's almost just kind of like a you know, we almost need to go for an alpha swing, or we're just going to have to rely on something like a big torment of hellfire. So, um, hadn't seen anything like that yet, but if we can at least keep her off the battlefield, she is five mana. And if we can go for Tails End, get it to seven, Snapcaster Tails End to get it to nine, um, that's going to be a pretty rough thing for our opponent. So, all right, so it's going to be Frantic Surge. I think at this point, um, we make the lane drop, and then do we want to jam a Frantic Surge right now? Yeah, I think I kind of like that. We, we've got two graveyard threats in Eternal Witness and Snapcaster Mage, so, so let's go for it. Let's go Forest, and um, we'll tap down Frantic Surge. So we're going to draw two cards, discard two cards, and we can still have some reliability. Ooh, the Mana Drain and Vampiric Tutor. Okay, so I like both of those. So let's go ahead and drop... Do we want to drop Torment of Hellfire right now? We're so far away from Torment of Hellfire, and we can always bring it back with Eternal Witness. So let's do that. So let's drop in Torment of Hellfire. And do we want to drop... I don't think we want to drop our fifth land drop. And I think we're actually okay with dropping in Crux of Fate. I mean, because we've still got Snapcaster on either one. So let's untap these three lands. 
yeah, and at this point, I, instead of going for Zahara, I want to leave up Mana Drain or Tails in, because if we can cash in a Mana Drain, that will be colorless mana, which is not going to help us out a ton with Zahara, but um, I want to... I want to just try to keep Lavinia in the command zone right now. Uh, but yes, with that frantic search, that worked out with us having Eternal Witness and Snapcaster Mage because basically it's just going to turn our entire graveyard into a uh, an extension of our hand, which is a very nice thing to see. And also, you may have noticed that our life total is starting at 40. Um, so I ran into, and you might hear this story throughout the week because I don't know which video is going and which one's going to be posted. But, um, but yeah, last weekend I ran into an issue to where I just couldn't get any games recorded. Like I, I would get one game and it wasn't that good, but there just wasn't a lot of people in the 1v1 commander room. And so um, somebody suggested switching over to the commander room within Magic Online because all my videos previously for you know, the last couple of years have been the 1v1 format, which is like 98% the same as regular commander, but there's still a few differences here and there. And um, it's just been hard to catch games on a reliable reliable schedule. All right, so our opponent's not going to uh, do anything with that. Um, do we want a Vampiric Tutor for something at this point? Because we need some, we kind of need some, some pretty quick mana. I kind of like this. So, so let's go Vampiric Tutor. Let's grab Sky Shroud Claim. Because we just really need to get this this kind of kicked open. So let's got, uh, grab Sky Shroud Claim. I'm just going to go on top of our library. It's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4. Now if they've got a counter spell, they've got it. But we can always try to go for it next turn. Yeah, let's do that. You know, if they're just going to be threatening us with a 1-4 right now, um, we've got time to kind of build up our board state. And we've got tons of great options in our hand. So let's just do this. Let's just go ahead and pass the turn to our opponent. Kind of kick it over there. Uh, but yeah, so I'm recording in the actual commander room and still playing 1v1, just regular commander that you play at your local gaming store. And I like it because I like the 40 life total. It gives us a little bit of extra resources. Um, it gives us more time to kind of set stuff up in our game and uh, just kind of do different things like that. All right, so our opponent is uh, simply just going to pass the turn. So maybe they're kind of banking on getting rid of... Zahara out of the command zone, something along those lines. So if we end up going for Lightning Greaves, I guess this is the point. If we tap out for Sky Shroud Claim, then they go Counterspell, then they go Lavinia. And we have no really follow-up answer to it, but we want to get something moving. But if they're just going to... Yeah, let's just do it. I know this is super slow, but, you know, in a matchup like this where we're just both kind of just <laughs> sitting there staring at each other drawing cards, um, we've got some pretty good answers to whatever they're trying to develop out there. So let's try to wait for them to make the first move. Um, when we're playing a deck like Zahara, um, it's not hard control per se. You know, it is soul type control at its base because we've probably got, let me see, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So we've got 14 X spell, modal X spells in this deck. You know, some of those are, you know, a little bit more control. We've got Logic Knot in here, which is really not that hard, especially with Delve out of the graveyard. So hitting some of the X spells on some of these is pretty nice. Uh, but one of the big things is that we do have a core package of, you know, four to five to six spells that we want to tap out as much mana as possible. And so... um we almost want to wait for the coast is clear. You know, if we tap out and then they deploy all their good stuff out there, we're kind of just doing like a little bit of a dance right now, really. So let's just see if we can keep making our land drops. All right, so we're not going to hit a uh, land drop off of that. It's going to be one, two, three. And that'll still keep us open on Tails in and Mana Drain. I think I kind of like that. And then it sets us up to a little bit of a safer Sky Shroud claim. So let's do this. So let's get the... Uh, the Pallet onto the battlefield. And this is a new card for the deck, too. So let's see if this is going to get any sort of counter magic from our opponent. And unfortunately, I just realized I'd... Um Okay, we've got we've got Pound on the Battlefield, any one color. I just realized that we didn't have Mana Drain Mana in response to that. So that was definitely me uh, tapping down wrong. But thankfully, that didn't hurt us. So anything else past the turn. So with that extra um, Pallet, um, that extra Mana on the Battlefield, that's going to make it easier for us to go for Sky Shroud Claim and still leave up uh, Tails End and Mana Drain. That way we can kind of stop something from our opponent. So let's see what this is going to be. Unexpectedly Absent. They're going to put that on the bottom... I think we're okay with that. Wait, there's a battlefield, scry one, scry two, scry three. Yeah, we're cool with that. You know, we'd rather save mana drain for you know, something like Lavinia or um, use tails in for that. So if they want to kind of do some little bit of scry action, kind of like that, they certainly can. Uh, but yeah, with the deck, with the actual Zahara. So it is soul type control, uh, but you are trying to control the game with like a really big X spell. So you do have to make sure you've got a lot of mana. Um, if we have a counter spell in here, it's because it's a high impact counter spell that matters a lot to us. Um, do we want to stick this... Uh, 
Yeah, let's do it. I, I think we stick Mana Drain on this one because that's going to give us access to four mana. Uh, potentially, it's going to get a Counterspell out of their hand if they've got one. That'll put them down to one card left in the hand. If this sticks, that's going to be four colorless mana. That's going to be a very easy Sky Shroud claim that we can turn into Lightning Greaves, into Zahara. Um, the fact that we didn't see Counter Magic from our opponent on this one enters the battle for Return Target Artifact or enchantment to its owner's hand. So they can send that back to them. Okay, so that's not the end of the world. And we're able to cash in that mana drain mana. That's really going to help us kind of rebuild from that. And uh, if they do have a bounce effect with that, that's going to get very not fun very quickly. But thankfully, if we're sticking some of our mana ramp on Sky Shroud Claim, uh, they don't really have a way to interact with our lands, at least right now. So, Okay, so we get to our draw step. Draw into Primordial Hydra. And... Okay... All right, so let's add this four colorless mana. Yeah, we still need to stick uh, Sky Shroud Claim. Let's, let's do that first. All right, so it's going to be one, two, three. I was thinking about just dumping out a really big Primordial Hydra and hoping that they don't have spot removal because if you don't have spot removal of Primordial Hydra, um, it turns into a very big threat very, very quickly. So let's go and grab a Tropical Island. Let's grab Bayou. Um, let's get those down. It's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. I think that's going to be a very good option for... Because that's going to be 12 next turn, and that'll be Trample. I like this. Let's go for it. Um, it kind of forces them to go for the Lavinia line of play, I think, too. And that keeps us open on... I thought we had Spot Removal. At the very least, we can go Vampiric Tutor Spot Removal. So let's tap down green. And these are the kind of tap-out plays that you want to go for. You know, I, I feel perfectly fine tapping out for Primordial Hydra right now. It's going to be a 5-5 five, five when it enters the battlefield. Um, maybe they have Counter Magic. Um, if they got Counter Magic, they stop it, and that kind of frees us up to go for Zahara. If they don't have any way to interact with this, then we're at least going to know that as the turns go on, um, they're basically just in top deck mode, and so we can play very aggressively, for, uh, aggressively um, with this one. So they're going to return that back to the hand. So let's get uh, Hydra back down. And then anything else, let's go and pass the turn. Yeah, the, this is pretty much what this deck is. You know, you, you want to get to this point to where you're just kind of playing it cool. And then you get to a point to where you can deploy a big threat out with a tap down threat, which is kind of hard to still maintain that control. But then once we untap, and if you don't know about Primordial Hydra, um, I got into magic during M12. And this this just blew my mind. I love this card. Um, enters the battlefield with X plus one counters on it. Then at the beginning of your upkeep, double the number of plus one counters on it. Then as long as it has uh, 10 or more plus one counters on it, it has trample. So it's going to go from a 5-5. Five, five. It's going to be a 10-10 ten, ten next turn. The following turn is going to be a 20-20. be a 40-40. We stick some lightning greaves on there and oh boy. <laughs> that sounds like some really good times. And especially with us having a Snapcaster uh, Mana Drain line of play to protect it. I kind of like that. We'll see. Now, if they get Lavinia down, and that's going to be... Oh, they may not have just enough mana for Crystal Shard. That's going to be... Oh, excuse me, they do. They're going to be able to send it back. So, we can still... And actually, now that I think about it, with the Primordial Hydra line of play... They're still going to be able to get that double blue creature down and bounce it back with Crystal Shard. So that is a very much a bummer. So we do have Snapcaster on Crystal Shard if we want to try to get rid of that. I think we need to do that. So let's go Snapcaster, because this is during our upkeep. So let's go Snapcaster Mage. We're going to go Vampiric Tutor. Because we really need to deal with this Crystal Shard. Right? You know, If we can win with Primordial Hydra, I definitely want to get that to stick. So we're going to go Snapcaster on Vampiric Tutor. All right, so we're going to put Return to Nature on top of our library. We're going to draw into Return to Nature. Let's go ahead and pop um, Destroy Target Artifact. Definitely want to take care of that right now. Okay, so we take care of Crystal Shard, and then we have no land drop for the turn. We can leave up Tails in, and I think we will end up leaving that up. So um, let's go ahead and push in. Or actually, no, we can't push in Snapcaster. Snapcaster doesn't have haste, and then uh, anything else will pass the turn. Uh, but yes, we, we do have an actual line of play with Primordial Hydra and Lightning Greaves. If we can get um, Lightning Greaves down, Primordial Hydra, um, that forces them to kind of do that uh, double blue creature to get that down. And try to push past that, and uh, I kind of like that. So, and at least next turn we can start going for pallet, and we can also end up going for getting lightning grease up. Just kind of setting ourselves up. So let's get pallet onto the battlefield, and then let's go ahead and go for lightning greaves, and that's going to put us at three total mana, We're still leaving up uh, tails in. Kind of like that. We could try to eternal witness for something else, but yeah, I think at this point we just uh, go for that. So let's go and push in for two um, with snapcaster mage. It's going to drop them down to a 38. 
And yeah, I think we still need to leave up tails in. I think that's going to be very important because if they deploy something out where we don't have a set way to get rid of Lavinia, um, I, I, I kind of like that. So we're going to leave up tails in. Um, next turn, now that we do have uh, Lightning Greaves out there, um, one of the cool things about Primordial Hydra trying to set up this line of play is that we can just drop it out. That's going to be one, two, one, two, three, four, five. So if we hit the land drop, that'll still keep us open on tails in, Primordial Hydra, Lightning Greaves onto Primordial Hydra. All right, so let's go for the tails in. Let's see. Let's see if this sticks. And, you know, that might also force them next turn to try to go for it again, potentially. We'll see. All right, that does send Lavinia back to the command zone, and they do have four cards left in the hand. Um, we did not we did not put Lightning Gre Greaves onto Snapcaster because um, they do have a lot of, you know, return stuff to their hand, and if for some reason they played some sort of creature spell that said, hey, you have to return a creature back to their hand, then... Uh, then yeah, you know, being able to return Snapcaster would definitely be a very good feeling. All right, so it's going to be Protector. And with Protector down, that's going to be one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. We might end up going Eternal Witness, Crux of Fate. And that'll be really none of the shenanigans that they can really do. But let's see if we draw into, uh, into the turn four, though, first. All right, that's going to be Overgrown Tomb. So we're definitely going to be able to shock that in. Um, do we want to go for this Crux of Fate line of play? Yeah, I think we try to stick this. So let's go and shock an overgrown tomb. We're going to pay two life on this one. Um, let's go for lightning greaves. And actually, we'll do it like this. So, so we'll go for primordial hydra first. So if we go for primordial hydra, either way, if they've got an answer, we don't have an answer to respond right away. So if we do primordial hydra first, it's going to be X in its casting cost. And that'll be a charge counter on pallet that we can tap down two for lightning greaves. I kind of like that. So let, let's do that. So that's going to be X on there. And that way, if they do have some sort of response, we can always tap that down. So um, that's going to be Pallet. Let's get Primordial Hydra down. And um, let's tap down two. Let's go Lightning Greaves. And excuse me, that two... <laughs> That two is only for X spells. I forgot about that. All right, there we go. Um, anything else? I think we're simply just... Yeah, we'll go and swing it with Snapcast. Yeah, for some reason, when I was sequencing the mana in my head, I thought that X was... Uh, as we keep casting X spells, we're able to... Uh, just kind of amplify this uh, palette, but unfortunately that I read the card wrong. So, all right, so we still have a 6-6 six, six on the battlefield. Um, they do have ways to interact with it. We'll still go and push in with Snapcaster Mage, uh, swing it in for two, see if we can't drop it down to 36. And then, you know, if they want to make the trade, we'll certainly do that. And then anything else pass the turn over there. So we're going to end up going for Lightning Greaves next turn. Um, it puts them in a spot to where they can't cast Stern Protector just yet. And so we can also end up going for Eternal Witness on Tail's End, where we can counter that triggered ability for something if we want to make sure that we can get Primordial Hydra to stick or something. So um, we still got a couple different options. Another good thing to do would... Um, probably going to try to end up going for Zahara next turn too, potentially. Um, just having that extra mana out there is going to be a very good thing for us. Um, it's going to allow us to, if we do draw into an X spell, or if we decide that the... Eternal Witness line of play is something that we want to do. Um, we might end up going Eternal Witness on Torment of Hellfire with Zahara out there, especially if we can get some of this pallet going. And we might end up being able to just kind of chain together some stuff with Primordial Hydra and the pallet. Um, you know, if our opponent decides that they want to start swinging Primordial Hydra back to the hand. So um, let's see, this is going to be Lavinia coming down. Okay. And we can't attack or block. And, they, you know, that is a little bit of a bummer that they're on the battlefield, Lavinia is, but at least we have some sort of way to uh, reset the board with Crux of Fate, or at least they don't have a way to uh, reliably bounce um, Lavinia out there. So, all right, so let's see what we draw into. That's going to be Catacombs. I'm um, just going to drop down Catacombs. And I think what we end up doing to get rid of this, um, let's do this first. So let's go Lightning Greaves. Because you know, all they have is Path to Exile mana, basically. So if they're going to use it, they would use it now. So let's get the Lightning Greaves onto Hydra. Let's go for Eternal Witness. And we're going to return Mana Drain back to our hand. So let's go and bring Mana Drain back to the hand. And that's going to cut us out on that uh, double blue creature. And yes, we will definitely use that ability. And that's going to be one, two, three, four. Yeah, so at this point right now, what we're going to do is we're simply just going to go ahead and... Uh, we could. We could go Zahara. Be able to add two mana to our mana pool. Tap down for four because we have not cast Zahara just yet. I think I'm okay with that. All right, so let's go and crack Catacombs. Let's get Zahara on the battlefield. 
And we're going to shift Lightning Greaves over onto Z Zahara because that's going to keep us open on Mana Drain. So we'll see if they've got Path to Exile Mana. All right, so they do not. All right, so anything else? Let's go and pass the turn over to our opponent. So we can't swing in because Lavinia came down. Uh, but I like where we're sitting right now. We've got at least a hard counter spell for next turn. If they decide to go for a, you know, a board wipe or something like that, we can get rid of that. Um, we can stop it with Mana Drain. Um, it does put us in a spot to where maybe we don't really want to worry that much about this double blue creature coming down to potentially so um the only other thing is that they knew that we grabbed a mana drain yeah so all right so that's definitely going to force us to go for zahara let's go double blue all right so we do stop the evacuation so the coast is clear for them to really get anything down now so that was definitely something that we had to stop Ooh, and that's going to be a terminus follow very good play by our opponents so it's going to put all the creatures on the bottom um, let's put, um, I guess, really any order on the bottom. We'll put Zahara back into the command zone. Okay, so now we do have Dryad, and uh, really, the everybody's just in top deck mode. Now, one of the good things about playing a Sultai X spell is that if we rip into something like Hydra Crisis, Villainous Wealth, um, that's where the money's at in a deck like this. So um, let's just kind of deploy it out. So we're going to add that five mana to our mana pool. Uh, let's go Gilded Lotus for free, which is very nice. Um, let's go ahead and go for Nurturing Peatland. We're going to go ahead and just crack this to draw a card. Um, Nature's Lore. Okay, we can do something with that. So let's go ahead and get Zahara down. Let's go for Nature's Lore. We'll get an extra land on the battlefield. That's going to be Forest. Um, let's get um, Dryad on the battlefield. And then let's go, I guess the biggest damage that we can swing in is going to be Zahara, because that's going to be commander damage. So that's the one that we care about the most. So let's go and push him for a 2-3. Uh, got them swinging in for 2, that's going to drop them down to 34, and that will be 2 total commander damage. So yes, like I did mention, we're in top deck mode right now. And we did get evacuation out of our opponent's hand, and we did get terminus out of our opponent's hand. So that is a very good feeling. Um, if they do go for another board wipe, so be it. But now we're at the point to where if we start to draw into one of our X spells, this is where that extra Sultai value is really going to make a difference. With that Villainous Wealth, Hydroid Crasis, uh, Hydroid Crasis um, something like uh, Steelbane Hydra, Miscutter Hydra, just being able to get this huge threat on the battlefield as soon as we top deck it, um, that's going to be a pretty good feeling. So let's see what they end up going for. That's going to be a Lavinia coming down, which is uh, no problem for us. That will detain our stuff, but it, it's not the end of the world. Okay, so see what we draw into, and that is going to be an island. So let's, uh, yeah, at this point, if we're, if we're running into potentially, you know, not being able to tap down Zahara, I think what we'll end up doing is still making our land drop. Sometimes I like to hold on to land cards to represent some sort of answer or something like that. Um, but at this point, we're, we're just simply going to make our land drop so that way we can capitalize on a uh, an X spell um, as soon as we draw into that. So, uh, But yeah, this is pretty much where you want to be in the late game. I mean, you'd like to have some card advantage <laughs> for sure. And uh, we do have it in here. We've got Stroke of Genius pulled from tomorrow. So if we can do something like that, that would definitely kind of help us out as far as finding some sort of win condition. And our opponent's going to go for Solve the Equation. So search your library for an instant or sorcery. Uh, put it in your hand. That's going to be, ooh. That's going to be Approach of the Second Sun. Okay. All right, so we've got some stuff to do. <laughs> Our opponent's got a clock. Uh, cause let's go. We're in top deck mode. I mean, we, we've got answers. We've got, like I mentioned, a Stroke of Genius, Pull from Tomorrow, um, Hydroid Crisis, Villainous Wealth. If we can find anything along those lines, then uh, we can make something like that work. But we're going to put this over here, so we definitely keep that in mind. So, And let's we'll see if we got Lavinia swinging in. All right, no swing in from Lavinia. And let's see what we draw into for the turn. But yes, any X spell, another island. All right, so let's go island. And uh, anything else, let's go and pass it back over there. Um, we've got elementals. Uh, we've got the pallet on the battlefield that'll help us out with some of those X spells. But if you're keeping score at home, you can start ticking down those uh, Approach of the Second Sun lines of play. Um, yeah, we, we maybe could have played this out differently. We had the Eternal Witness line of play on Mana Drain. Um, I still like that. Um, the other thing that we were maybe going to do with Eternal Witness was uh, use it to bring back uh, Crux of Fate or Torment of Hellfire or something along those lines, which, you know, would have been nice. But since we have no way to kind of protect it in the same turn, you know, if we tap out for it and they do have a counter spell, then we're in a pretty bad spot. So, all right, so it's going to be Stern Protector. That's going to be sending uh, Gilded Lotus back to the hand, which uh, if we just keep making our land drops off the top, then that's going to be no problem at any point. And so they'll be able to send that back. Let's see if they're going to swing in. We might just be counting down the time to until we get to approach of the second sun, which is, uh, I kind of like that. That's a pretty good, ooh. All right, so it's going to be Snapcaster. So we've got Snapcaster, Torment of Hellfire. That's going to be a very big Hydra. 
we have no way to search our library. We could potentially, because I, I know Torment of Hellfire, that's going to be one, two with Pallet. We've got Snapcaster, that's going to be one, two, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That's going to be a Torment of Hellfire for eleven with us completely tapping out. Um, that's going to be eleven, that's going to be ten, nine, eight, seven. That wouldn't end the game necessarily. It would put some pressure on them, but with us having Snapcaster on just something. I think we try to roll out, well, if we end up going for Gilded Lotus and they probably end up going for the Riptide line of play and sending it back to the hand again. If they've got Counter Magic, they've got it. So let's try it. Let's just go Snapcaster. We've got Snapcaster coming down. We're going to target Torment of Hellfire. And if they got Counter Magic, they've got it. They'll probably, I would assume they'd stop Snapcaster, or at least they'll stop whatever's coming out of the graveyard. But let's give it a shot. So let's go Snapcaster. Spell Crumble. Okay, so that's going to go on the bottom. All right, so that's going to stop that line of play. So it's going to be one, two. We're going to get Gilded Lotus down. And I get, yeah, and actually we don't want to swing in with Zahara because Zahara does have Death Touch. And so if we send Lavinia back to the command zone, then that's going to give them an option to just recast it again. So um, at this point, we are not going to swing in. We're simply just going to go and pass the turn. So, all right, so we did draw into an answer. We did draw into Snapcaster. Um, I, I was pretty much going to go for that Torment of Hellfire line of play because we end up going for Torment of Hellfire. I think that would be like Torment for like 10 or something like that or 9. And if they want to sack down a couple rocks and a couple creatures, um, they certainly could. But the main thing that that would give us is it would attack their life total. And it would give us a very sizable Hydra creature, like a 9-9, nine, nine, something out there that we could really try to start putting, you know, because Lavinia is a very sizable creature for a control deck. You know, it doesn't have flying, but with that 4-4 four, four body on the battlefield, um, that's definitely something that you, you've got to have something pretty powerful to push past that. So it's going to be Stern Protector coming down. And uh, we could add mana in response to that, but it's, it is what it is. All right, so it's going to be Stern Protector. Let's see what they end up sending back. And they're going to send the Elemental Palette back to you. Yeah, we're, we're fine with that because technically we're going to get ahead on a little bit better mana uh, with Gilded Lotus unless they have some sort of answer for Gilded Lotus. So, And if we just want to keep this loop going of them sending it and recasting it, we certainly can. But we'll see what else they have. Okay, so they're going to send it back to the hand. Actually, they're probably going to end up going for the double line of play, I guess. Yeah, send on Gilded Lotus back to the hand. Okay. That's fine. We can work around it. You know, even if we draw an X spell, not you know, it does help having Gilded Lotus or Pallet on the battlefield. But we've got enough lane drops to where it is a uh, a pretty good feeling. All right. So um, I don't know what the approach is, <laughs> and the, I'm gonna take a quick reader approach to make sure we fully. All right. So it's gonna be Command Tower. Yeah. I mean, we've got nothing else to do. So let, let's just go Gilded Lotus. <laughs> And what we'll do on this, we'll tap down Gilded Lotus with Pallet. That way we're not getting down on, on land mana. So um, anything else will pass turn. So let's take a quick look at Approach of the Second Sun. That way we can make sure we're interacting with it correctly. Um, as our opponent gets closer to the Approach of the Second Sun, if this spell is cast from your hand and you've cast it, you win the game. Otherwise, put it in the seven. Okay. So I'm, I guess, yeah, it has to resolve. So if we can counter it, I, I think if I, I'm reading that correctly, if we can counter it, I think we've got it, but I'm going to stop it. I think that's interactions correct, but we'll see what's happening. The only good thing is our opponent hasn't ran into, well, excuse me, they did. That's going to be deliberate, scry two, then draw a card. And I can't remember how quickly, because they go approach of the second sun. That's going to be seventh from the top. So there has been a couple card draws. And then they got Deliberate, that's going to be scry two, then draw. So they scry three. I think they're like five deep into the library at this point right now. We'll see. Let's see what they roll out for the turn. Because if we end up getting Villainous Wealth, <laughs> a Villainous Wealth is a way to steal that top part of the library. That Oh, man, that would be just absolutely wonderful. Okay, so while we dream of Villainous Wealth, I'm going to let our opponent kind of roll through this uh, Stern Protector line of play. All right, so that's going to be Lavinia, and they're going to be completely tapped out on mana. So that's going to detain all of our permanents, which... Still not the end of the world, because we're not winning this through combat damage. Um, there will be the Cloudstone Curio line of play if they want to send Stern Protector back to the hand, but they have no mana. Okay, so let's see. I feel like they're getting pretty close, because with the Scry 2 and then two turns, yeah, I feel like it's Icy Blast. The only downside is um, Lightning Greaves are just detained with Lavinia, so we can't go for that. And actually, with Icy Blast, we're, we're just going to go and hold on to that right now, so... I guess we can still end up going Gilded Lotus once again to kind of force them to go for that Cloudstone line of play. So let's get Gilded Lotus down. 
And then we still have access to uh, to Icy Blast. So if they deploy a few more creatures out there, we might be able to get a little bit of an extra boost in a Hydra token. But even then, we got to wait for them to kind of flood the board with a few more creatures. So um, anything else past the turn? Yeah, this is a little bit of a bummer. Um, you know, this is, you know, at the beginning of the game when we had all the lands, I was like, ah, we just don't have card advantage. You don't have a way to kind of cycle through the top part of our deck super quick. Um, you know, in a deck like this, when you have an X draw spell, all right, opponent's going to go for Approach of the Second Sun. They've got it on this one. Good game to our opponent. Um, they got it. I knew it was getting close. I couldn't remember what it was. And, uh, but yeah, opponent goes well played. Same to them. That was a beautiful game. You know, that evacuation, uh, Terminus line of play that one turn, that was really cool to see. Um, this was not an overpowered Lavinia deck. You know, I felt like it was very, you know, very good power level. And uh, we just both kind of got into top deck mode. And Approach of the Second Sun was, hey... <laughs> <laughs> That's how you cl games got to close out sometimes, so they did. Um, but yeah, one of the ways that we could have interacted with Approach of the Second Sun was maybe hitting a Villainous Wealth, but unfortunately we aren't going to hit it. Um, something like Icy Blast is good in a deck like this when we have an established board state, and we can tap down a bunch of cre creatures and use it like a Psychonic Rift and get an extra token that tags along. Uh, but top decking it against Approach of the Second Sun, hey, that's not going to get it done. But anyways, if you enjoyed the video, hey, like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye.